Greetings, my fellow intellect devourers in the making. Know that your brains are just several steps away from, uh, you know, sprouting legs and tentacles and uh, being free from the casing of your skull. I know my brain longs for freedom from the tyranny of the skull. Uh, anyways, this is Baldur's Gate 3. Welcome back. Uh, we're continuing on where we left off. We, we crashed. Unfortunately, our pet intellect devourer got uh, dead. Which is really tragic. I was, uh, you know, he was starting to grow on me. Good old us. Alright, so of course, uh, first thing you gotta do, always, is go left. Game tells you to go right, go left. Uh, cause there's usually something to find, and I deliberately never went left when I initially tried this game. But it looks like... Looks like I've deceived myself, cause it doesn't look like there's anything actually here to find. What about with jumping? There, uh... No, can't jump anywhere. Path interrupted. Alright. Well, looks like there's nothing to find left. Wow, a mangled fisher. Well, it's a real shame, but uh, I don't think you need your gold anymore, so we're going to take that. Who's this? Oh, hi, it's Shadowheart. You're, uh... I'm sure she's just sleeping. Hmm. We could take it. I am curious, but I don't think our character is, is, uh, you know, she, she's all, uh, our character here, uh, Ash, she's pretty frazzled. She doesn't really have too many memories of, of what happened prior to, uh, you know, the parasite incident, but her personality is mostly still intact. And while she's Certainly curious and, uh, you know, prone to doing nefarious things from time to time. Ultimately, she's not a bad person. She's just a little bit misguided. So we're just going to wake up Shadowheart. We'll, uh, I'm sure we'll figure out what this mysterious D20 looking You're thing alive. is. I'm alive. How is this possible? Yeah, I was hoping you might know I that. remember the ship. I remember falling... Then nothing. Do you have any idea where we are? No. I don't recognize this place. But anything's an improvement on where we just came from. That's true. First things first. We need supplies, shelter, and most of all, a healer. We yeah. must have escaped, but we still have these little monsters in our heads. All right. Uh, what happened to our gift friend? You might want to reconsider calling her a friend. Looks like she ran off without us. Hmm. Alright, you want to stay together, I take it? We need each other. And we both know what's at stake. Can't think of better company. I mean, there's no other options, so... Well, normally that would be a compliment. I don't know about here and now. Alright, let's get moving. One thing. Just before we go. I wanted to thank you again for freeing me. It would have been all too easy for you to run right past my pod, but you didn't. I'll remember that. Lead the way. Cool stuff. Anytime. Anytime. You know, I feel it's, uh, it's very important that, you know, if you ever get the chance to save somebody from a mysterious alien pod that you, uh, you do so. It's just... It's it's ingrained into my morality. My parents taught me well. Always save people from alien pods. Um, also, a little, little note on Shadowheart here. So, we got the little pop-up here. Uh, Daughter of Darkness. And I can't help but notice she's wearing a circlet with a black disc on it. And she's got another thing in her hair with a black disc on it. And her breastplate has a black disc on it. And her pauldrons have black discs on them. Hmm. I wonder if she's a cultist of Shar. That would be my guess. Uh, Shar is the goddess of darkness and loss and anguish. Uh, anguish? Actually, I don't know about anguish. Dar darkness, loss, isolation, maybe? Let's check what's in this barrel. Alright, we've got ourselves a hammer. Thieves' tools, which could be good. Sleight of hand. Do we have sleight of hand? Like, we can use this to open uh, locks and stuff. Uh, we can, we've also leveled up, so we'll, we'll check that in just a second. Oh, whoops. I wanted to see if we have sleight of hand. I can't remember what skills I got. Um, should be present here somewhere. Right? No. Uh, proficiency bonus plus two. Can we, can we see? 
what we're proficient in here. Um, hmm. Skill wise, maybe here. Ah, here we go. Slide of hand, plus five, indeed. So we can actually do lock picking and stuff ourselves, which is cool. We don't need a rogue or anything. Um, hello. Murgrass. So you can press Alt, and it'll reveal some of the highlighted things. It doesn't reveal everything. All right, we've got another dead Fisher. What happened to him? Seems like he slipped in uh, cherry juice. He must have fallen asleep. Happens to the best of us. Same thing with this. Oh, no. It's not us. It's another. I choose to believe this is another intellect devourer. Well, we got some fish here. We'll take this. So, these grant camp supplies. It's a fish. Its bulging eye seems to stare at you with a dark loathing. Eh. Can't trust any of those fish. There's other types of fish, too. If I recall. Uh, yeah, look at that. Oh, a fish head. Commonly used in stocks or grilled for the succulent bits of cheeks, throat, and eyes. And we have a headless fish. Well, I wonder where the head went. <laughs> Tiny fish bones stick out from the cut tail. All right. And we have, uh, shanties for the bitch queen. That's rude. And we all row with the spray on our necks. And we all row with the spray on our backs. And we all row with the, sp with the sea beneath our feet. And the bitch queen stays the storm. Wave mother, wave mother, lash us to the prow. Wave mother, wave mother, we ask to sail your skirt. Wave, uh, if you allow, wave mother, wave mother, sink us if you will. Wave mother, wave mother, our skulls are yours with brine and sand to fill. Soul away and anchor still, the wind won't move without the bitch queen's will. We'll wait gladly years and days till the bitch queen <laughs> brings the waves. Hey ho, she told us so. <laughs> hey ho, she told us so. So the bitch queen is uh, uh, Umberly, the goddess Umberly, who is the god goddess of the sea and storms. And um, yeah, she's uh, she's not very friendly. Let's just say uh, very capricious, kind of kind of like Poseidon, but more violent. And Poseidon was pretty violent, like all of the Greek gods were uh, kind of jerks. Well, most of them. Nobody talks shit about Hestia. She cool. The rest of them, all kind of horrible. <laughs> Alright, a perfumed letter. Let's read this. Sigh. I love you. There, I said it. And if you meet me tomorrow, I'll say it again. And again. And keep on saying it till we're old and gray. Let's do it. Let's go to Baldur's Gate. I know it's risky, but so staying here. The last few months have been hard. But they're always a little easier when you're there. Bring your boat and meet me at the hill overlooking the old bridge. Bring whatever you can carry. We'll make do with the re without the rest. Don't be late. Love, Anna. Uh, hold on. I just unplugged my mouse trying to unplug something else that was unplugging itself. There we go. Problem solved. Okay. Uh, well, unfortunately, uh, it would appear that Sai did not make it. I'll take the letter. Maybe we'll find this Anna at some point. We can uh, give the letter to her and be like, Yo, sorry, your uh, your lover belongs to the sea now. Probably literally when the tide comes in. But hey, it's a sea burial. Food for the crabs. I too would like to donate my corporeal form to the crabs when I expire. Alright, we're checking everything. We're looting everything. We got ourselves more Thieves' Tools. This is why we loot everything, because Thieves' Tools are expended when you do a, uh, a lock-picking test. Alright, we'll, uh, we'll take everything. Screw it. We'll take the mug. You never know. Maybe we need it. Another dead intellect devourer, and we've discovered a waypoint, which is that thing right there, an ancient sigil circle. Uh, I don't know if you can actually interact with them. Um, we'll take this Belladonna, too. Nice. Some toxic uh, plants. So we can create Supplement of Belladonna. Okay, so this just creates... Ooh, fancy. We have ourselves a door. So that's just basically... That's your fast travel system. Can't get that open easily. All right. Maybe there's another entrance. Let's give it another try. You know, maybe it was a low roll. No, all right. <laughs> so... That's, uh, oh, we have more Belladonna here. Good stuff. And some more Murgrass. So you can take all of these for alchemy. And I actually have not done the alchemy in this game. But I do plan on, uh, doing alchemy. Oh, and we got Dagger Root over there. Good stuff. So again, I'm holding Alt down. So if you guys are playing this game yourselves, which I would highly recommend. It's pretty awesome. Uh, this is, uh, you know, as, uh, people said in the comments, it's... No other game has reached the level of depth 
when it comes to role-playing opportunities that this one has. Um, and I believe it. Did we already get this one? I, I, am I going in circles? I think I'm going in circles. No, uh, we're clearly not going in circles because I have not been there. What about this backpack? I'm pretty sure I grabbed this backpack, but maybe I missed it. I did not miss it. We have an old floppy hat. All right. What does it look like? Equip. Oh, it does the stupid, uh, your hair doesn't appear under the hat. So we don't want to wear that. Um, oh, what do we got? Oh, hello. Uh, are they hostile? I'm pretty sure they're hostile. So let's, uh, let's hide here. We can do, uh, group hide is shift C. Alright, cool stuff. Uh, so there's a dead one right here. Let's see if we can grab this without setting ourselves on fire. Okay, there was nothing in there to begin with. I can't tell if they're enemies. Maybe we should announce our presence. You know, maybe they're, maybe they're like us. You know, us. I'll let you decide which us we're talking about. But if we announce our presence, let's do it from up here. Just in case. Okay. Well, that's apparently not going to work. So Shadowheart failed at hiding. I don't know if I want to get too close, though. Or at least I don't want to get too close. Um, let's remove the hiding. Okay. Better stay back. Or strike. So, they are hostile. That is unfortunate. So we're gonna move just up here so that we can blast this one with an Eldritch Blast. I should have leveled up. I'm an idiot. All right, well, we're gonna do that after this battle. So we're basically fighting this, uh, doing this fight with a hand tied behind our back because uh, I'm a dunce. This may be the end, guys. Hi, you're close. I don't know how much damage these guys do, but we'll probably find out pretty soon. Okay, so Shadowheart can uh, give that one a good old whack. We can also do an Inflict Wounds. That one's got 9 health. This one's got 10. I'd rather use this on the one with 10. So we're going to go over there and uh, kill it dead. All right, so that was unfortunately a waste of our level 1 Necromancy spell. But hey, we got some Intellect Devourer Cerebellum. Intellect Devourers are born of the brains of humanoid Mind Flayer Thralls. So what is it exactly that you are holding in your hands? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good question. Apparently, we can distill it into alchemical stuff, which uh, sounds very sketchy, but, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, so hopefully we can kill... They both have nine, so I'd rather get rid of this one. Almost. So close. So, that one's coming. You're gonna attack there. Nice. You missed. Ouch. Eight damage. Okay. That's a lot of damage. So we gotta, we gotta take this one out. Uh, we have an 85% chance to kill it. I think we can do it. Good job. Hold on, Shadowheart. Give me another uh, Intellect Devourer Cerebellum. No? All right. Uh, so I can do a Healing Word. It's bonus action. So uh, we'll heal a bit. I'm going to do that just so that we don't, you know, die. We, we might still die. We have seven health. That thing probably can deal enough damage to get rid of us. We'll see. I can stab this one. Where are you at? Nine to ten damage. Uh, that's 90% chance of hitting. We are at, at disadvantage, but we still have a 90%, so I think we're still probably better off using uh, Eldritch Blast. Fortunately, didn't do all that much. Haha! <laughs> I have good AC, because I have high dex. And now you're dead. Perhaps our survival isn't such a distant prospect. Yeah. It won't be such a distant prospect if we actually level up. So we're going to do that. We're going to have a quick uh, look-see here uh, as the game loads infinitely. There we go. Level 2, Warlock. So, I now have 13 hit points. We have another level 1 spell slot. Or just another Warlock spell slot, I guess. And we have gained two passives. It's one of the reasons why I like the Warlock. Because there's actually a lot more um, choice in terms of how to build your character when it comes to leveling up. This is something... Uh, I apologize for any D&D slander. I, I know a lot of people in the comments like... D, D quite a bit, and that's perfectly fine. I, I, it's better to like D and D than to not like D <laughs> and D. And again, I don't, I don't hate it. I just have a lot of problems with how they built the the system, and particularly with how they simplified the system since three point five. 
uh, specifically. Like, I, in my opinion, the rule set for D&D has gone downhill since then um, because of oversimplification, which is something that you find in a lot of games. So it's not just D&D that has this issue. Um, but one of the issues is that there's not much that you get from leveling up uh, for most classes. Like, you just... Your stats improve, your skill proficiencies improve. Like, in 3.5, you actually picked where you put your skill points. So, say if you wanted to, and you had X amount of skill points to put, you didn't necessarily have to put it in the same skills every single time. Now, you often didn't do that because you wanted to max out particular skills, but, like, it was kind of cool to be able to be like, hey, I actually want to shift the direction of the character. I'm now going to put some skill points into this other skill at the cost of certain other ones but to give you a more diverse skill set. Uh, and then you got to pick feats and, and other things, and all that's really cool. And Yeah. Uh, so one of the reasons why I like the Warlock is there's still a bit of that here. Uh, and the other classes have less of it, in my opinion. Like, So we can pick a new spell. We can take Arms of Hadar, um, which is basically going to just do a... Uh, I think it's a 3-meter burst around me. That'll deal 2d6 necrotic damage and prevent targets from using reactions. So you can blast them with an Arms of Hadar and retreat is the idea. Um, so if you're stuck in combat, which uh, I think we want. I do also want Charm Person. I would also like Hex. But we're going to get Arms of Hadar first. Also, this is a, uh, a Star Pact Warlock thing. So Hadar is one of the, uh, the ancient stars, which is, of course, uh, they are Far Realm entities. So we're going to get Arms of Hadar. And we can get two Eldritch Invocations. So this is what I was talking about. These are kind of like feats, as they used to be. Um, but these are like kind of build-defining, like Agonizing Blast here. When you cast Eldritch Blast, add your Charisma modifier to the damage it deals, unless it's negative. So with our Charisma of 17, which is going to translate to a modifier of plus 3. It's basically how modifiers work. Is It is the attribute minus 10 divided by 2. That is your modifier. Uh, and then it's rounded down, so... Our Charisma of 17 translates to a plus 3 modifier. Same with our Dex of 16. It's a plus 3 modifier. Whereas our Int of 13 is going to create a plus 1 modifier. And our Strength will be a minus 1 modifier. So this will basically cause our Eldritch Blast to deal plus 3 damage. Which sounds awesome. Now we can also get Armor of Shadows. You can cast Mage Armor on yourself without expending a spell slot. Uh, nice little defensive thing. Um, uh... Maybe, maybe. Beast speech? You can speak with animals at will without expending a spell slot. See, that sounds quite good. However, it... And it is good. It's very cool. Speak with animals is awesome. Um, but... It doesn't really fit the theme of this character. Beguiling influence. You can invoke your patron's bewitching charm. You gain proficiency in deception and persuasion. I already have proficiency there, so we don't need that. Devil's Sight. You can see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical, to a distance of 24 meters. Could be good. Fiendish Vigor. You can cast False Life on yourself at will without expending Spell Slot. It'll grant seven temporary hit points. That could be good. Mask of Many Faces, which would allow me to disguise self at will without expending a Spell Slot. One with the Shadows. Uh, I can cast one with the Shadows. I wish it told me what that did. Or Repelling Blast. When you hit a creature with Eldritch Blast, you can push the creature up to 4.5 meters away from you. That could be good. Or Thief of Five Fates. Once per long rest, you can cast Bane using a Warlock spell slot. Okay. Bane is good. So basically, it targets up to three creatures. They receive a minus 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving rolls. But it uses up a spell slot. So I'm not going to take that. Um, you know what? I think I... Like, none of the other ones really jump out at me, except for maybe Fiendish Vigor. But we're not fiendish either. And like the Mask of Many Faces for the disguising self uh, seems more like a fey thing. I don't know what one with shadows is. And like you can't really go back on this. Or maybe you can. I don't know if there's a, uh, a respec thing. So I'll tell you what. I think I will just take Beast Speech. Just for its utility. It's a little bit out of theme for our character. You know, being like a star pact or a pact with a great old one. But you know what? There are great old ones that have affinity for beasts, right? I mean, from H.P. Lovecraft's mythos, you have Shubnigurath. 
the black goat of the woods with a thousand young, the mother of all beasts. Perhaps our patron is something like that. All right. And Shadowheart will level up as well. So you'll see here, like, you get your spells, but there's not much else to be attained here aside from just things that you automatically get. So she just got Turn Undead. And she got, uh, so basically Turn Undead will um, cause all undead within nine meters to become frightened for three turns. And then Invoke Duplicity here. Distract your enemies with an illusion within three meters of the illusion. Attack rolls have advantage for you and your allies. Okay, interesting. That could be good. We have ourselves a level one spell slot and a channel divinity charge. And then we get to prepare a couple of new spells. So the current, we have our five spells here that we have. Uh, we've got Inflict Wounds, Guiding Bolt, Healing Word, Shield of Faith, and Cure Wounds as level one. So uh, what is her, yeah, it, it says it right here. Um, so she is <laughs> clearly a cultist of Char. Um, I don't know if we're supposed to know this yet. She hasn't like mentioned it, but we can see this here. So I'm going to kind of build thematically. Um, now, she is a, uh, a cleric, so there's going to be some healing involved. All clerics seem to do healing, uh, which I'm also not a huge fan of, I think. I much prefer it when the actual gods that you worship with, like, divine magic or something in a game uh, are give you, like, most of the spells that you get, which is, uh, you know, the, the game that I'm making does that. Uh... I'll, I'll, I'll give a little bit of uh, detail on the game I'm making as we go through, but we won't bog ourselves down with that right now. So I'm going to, like, the healing spells I think I'm going to keep. So you may be wondering, like, what are these two healing spells? What, why would you use this one? This one's a bonus action, and has an 18 meter range. It heals a lot less. It's 4 to 7 rather than 4 to 11. This one only has touch range, so you need to be right up there, and it is a melee action. Um, so you need to, like, be right on them. I'm going to actually remove this one, because we're just going to rely on Healing Word. Um, I am also going to drop Shield of Faith, and I'm going to drop Guiding Bolt. And what we're going to take is Bane, because she's a Shar cultist. Uh, Shar is, you know, kind of an evil god. Um, we can take Command as well. Because we can command things to drop weapons. Could be cool. Um, protection from evil and good. Sanctuary, a target cannot be targeted until you attack or harm a creature. Still take damage from area spells. All right. Good way to, like, save target. Now, you know what's... No, we're not going to take Guiding Bolt, because that's radiant damage, and that is, like, antithetical to Char. Um, blessing. Yeah, we'll take Blessing and Bane. Sounds good. So Blessing is like the inverse of Bane. You can bless up to three creatures, granting them a plus 1d4 bonus to attack and saving rolls. So, let's take that. That is, uh... Is that blood? No. no Alright. So, we're gonna Already. have a quick look around here. We have a Nautiloid tank. Who knows what that is? Uh, there is a Cartilaginous chest up here, so we're gonna have a quick look-see. And a dead mind player. What do we got here? Wizard Bane Oil. This is a poison? No, it's not. It's a uh, it's an oil. Coat your weapon in oil. Its targets receive minus three to spell attack rolls, spell save DC, and disadvantage on saving throws from maintaining concentration. Okay, so this is like anti magic. It says in the name, wizard vein oil. That's that's cool. Got ourselves a void bulb and a skull. So we can throw void bulbs, which will basically act as a mini uh, gravity bomb. So they'll draw things into it, which is kind of cool. Um, so we can head up here. There's another dead mind flayer. Looks fit. And, uh, we, we could probably just walk up there. We... You uh, you okay there? Uh, Potion of Speed. This would grant an extra action, a plus two bonus to armor class, advantage on dexterity saving throws, and double your movement speed. Nice. When the condition ends, become lethargic. Cool. And then spike the bulb. The bulb inside this, or the barbs inside this bulb explode on impact, making all nearby creatures bleed. We got ourselves a uh, an illithid fragmentation grenade. You can head up this way. I mean, it doesn't look like there's anything in the way. There's a dead mind player, or we can go this way. I'm gonna actually head out this way. Let's, let's head down here, because we got... This is not where we started. We started over there, I think, on the other side of this tentacle. Let me check. Where are we? Yeah, we started down here, so this is a different area. So let's, let's have a look here. 
Uh, we got some things to check. Maybe there's some more cerebellums for us to uh, extract. More thief tools. That's always good. Another wooden trunk here. 11 gold. And we have ourselves a locked trunk. So what I'm going to do is actually lockpick this. And... Uh, so we get ourselves a, uh, we're gonna have to expend one of our Thieves' Tools. We get a plus three bonus from Dexterity, plus two from Sleight of Hand, and we can add Guidance. So this is a cantrip, so we can just infinitely use this, providing Shadow Hearts nearby, because she's the one casting Guidance on us. So, that's a really cool thing about this game, is that you can cast these spells while you need to make the skill checks for them. So, it's awesome. And we succeeded that pretty good, so let's see what was inside. We found ourselves a Leather Helmet which will provide plus one to dexterity saving throws and 17 gold. So I'm going to give the leather helmet to, uh... Actually, I'm just going to put it on myself. Uh, we're going to hide the helmet, though. Yeah, just hide helmet. I don't like the look of it very much. Um, we'll grab some uh, more herbs. Some mergrass, some belladonna. Uh, was there anything else around here to take? Doesn't look like it. As what? What, is there like a deep ocean trench? Through here? No, it just says everything is chasm. So I guess chasm is just not traversable terrain. Perhaps. Um alright, let's let's go up here. We'll see what we find. Um you know, we're we're checking all the uh all the corners, so there's some sort of a uh, little rocky outcropping here. It's got some balsam, which is another uh herb. Good stuff. We can now make ashes of balsam, which is another uh, alchemical reagent. Cool, cool. Hello, Asterian. We'll uh, we'll, go, we'll go check out what he's up to in just a minute. What's up here? From the looks of it, absolutely nothing. Cool. You need some help, do you? All right. Seems like a good moment to talk. Hurry! I've got one of those brain things cornered. Oh yeah. There, in the grass. You can kill it, can't you? Like you killed the others. So you've been watching me, have you? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll I'll do it. There. Can you see it? No. That's not a brain thing, Asterion. Uh-oh. He's pulled a knife on us. Not a sound. Not if you want to keep that darling neck of yours. And you. Keep your distance. No need for this to get messy. Come on. I need her alive. Stow that blade, or I'll show you just how messy things can get. Ah, promises, promises. But I have other business, I'm afraid. Now, I saw you on the ship, didn't I? Nod. Mm, I'm gonna headbutt him. I don't tolerate this kind of... Oh no, we're, we're not casting Bless here. I'm just gonna give it a, give it a good old try. Nice. <laughs> you wretched little <laughs> Your mind twists. You're looking out of unfamiliar eyes, prowling dark, busy streets. You try to hold the memory, but it fades to the worm. The light, the fear. <laughs> what was that? What's going on? Put the knife away and I'll tell you everything. I'm not an idiot. It has to be those tentacled monsters. Something they did. Well, you're technically right. They took you too. I saw it during... whatever just happened. And to think... I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> Apologies. Um, glad to see we're all cut up now. <laughs> Indeed we are. Please, allow me to introduce myself. My name's Astarian. 
I was in Baldur's Gate when those beasts snatched me. Uh, I'm just gonna nod. We're not gonna give away where we're from yet, because we don't really remember where we're from yet. I have an idea of where she's from, but uh, we'll see if that comes up. The strong and silent type. All right. <laughs> Please tell me you at least know something about these worms. Yes, unfortunately, they'll turn us into mind players. Turn us into... <laughs> <laughs> Of course it'll turn me into a monster. What else did I expect? Although, it hasn't happened yet. If we can find an expert, someone that can control these things, there might still be time. Uh, control it? We need to get rid of it. Well, yes, of course. But first things first. All right. You should travel with me. Our odds are better together. You know, I was ready to go this alone. But maybe sticking with the herd isn't such a bad idea. And you seem like a useful person to know. Mm -hmm. All right. I accept. Lead on. So. Pallid skin. Slightly elongated incisors, which we uh, saw during the cutscene. I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, I certainly did. Hmm. Well, let's level them up. So, let's, let's see what uh, the level up screen's going to say about him. So, hit points to 17. He has gotten a couple of new uh, actions. So, he's got a uh, cunning action hide, which he can... Basically, these are actions we can all normally do, except for disengage, uh, I think. Actually, can we all do disengage? I have no idea. Um, these actions... Take... Uh, yeah, so this is a bonus action. So, he can basically do this uh, once per long rest, or once per rest. Uh, he can basically do all of these actions as a, uh, a bonus action rather than a uh, proper action, which allows him to uh, gain extra mobility or hide really quickly or disengage quickly. So, yeah. See, but see what I mean? There's, like, nothing else that you do when leveling up. He just gets this done. Okay, cool. Which uh, is unfortunate. Wish there was a little bit more customizability. But, uh, alas, that is a limitation of this system. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll make do. It's, it's fine for the purpose of a... Uh, video game. And, uh... A mind flayer. And it's hurt. Is it now? Or is it at? Bound to be dangerous, even if injured. Best be careful. Yeah, best be careful. I know the mind flayers are just misunderstood. Ah, uh, shit, we kind of have to get close to it, don't we? I know I may have, uh, thought this last time, but I've come to my senses at this point. Mind flares are not just misunderstood. They're horrible. These are some awful, awful creatures. And we don't want to get close to it because it's got horrible psy psionic powers. I think what I want to do is just blast it from a distance. All right, cool stuff. <laughs> Monster. Death is too good for it. The only good mind flare is dead mind flare. All right. Problem solved. <laughs> You know, Eldritch Blast first, ask questions later. Or Eldritch Blast first, no questions to be asked. That's also fine. Uh, just scanning around. Looking looking for other things. Uh, so there's nowhere else to go down that way. So what we can do is head up this way. Um, hmm, there's fire there that we could jump over. Or we can make our way down this dead path. Goblins over there. Some dead goblins. Worth checking for supplies, maybe. Hmm, what happened to them? And axe, aka a hatchet. We'll give that to Shadowheart, and I'll give this uh, healing potion to Asterion. So I still have. I, I've got five supply pack and a goblin bow. We'll give the goblin bow to Asterion, and uh, a bone, and we got ourselves a goblin scimitar, which we're also going to give to Asterion. Speaking of Asterion, what kind of equipment do you have? Watch your back. Um, you have a kniff. So, you could take a Goblin Scimitar. It'll deal 4 to 9 damage instead. 
doesn't look very good for him. Uh, this is going to deal 4 to 7 damage. We could also have him dual wield, so if we were to, say, give him another dagger, or we could give him short swords. Let's actually give him a pair of short swords. So we'll, we'll do that. That'll be 4 to 9, and then, uh, yeah, you can take a second one, which is only going to deal 1 to 6. What about with the dagger? What's that going to do? 1 to 4? All right, so you don't actually get the damage bonuses. But, uh, you know, it's cool. You can dual wield... Uh, Um, do you want the floppy hat? Maybe, maybe you can have the floppy hat. Yeah, it look, looks good. You can have the floppy hat. All right. At least things have stayed interesting. So, uh, what have we here? We have ourselves another sigil stone, or ancient What's sigil circle. Yeah. What is going on with that rune? Unstable. You approach the sigil on the stone. Magic glitters and swirls from it erratically, as if malfunctioning. It looks slightly dangerous. Hmm. Uh, dangerous magic? Let's poke it. Ow. <laughs> A hand? Anyone? A mysterious hand coming out of a portal. All right. Uh, who are you? Just your average traveler stuck between realms. Pull me out, and we'll get properly introduced. All right. We'll do our warlock charisma. Tune yourself to the sigil's magic, and then bid it to quiet down. So we can apparently do that. That's kind of cool. So, we'll add some Guidance from Shadowheart onto that, of course. And we have succeeded. Whatever you're doing is working wonders! Now a quick little pull should do the trick! Hello there. Oh. Hello. <laughs> I'm Gale of Waterdeep. Apologies. I'm usually better at this. <laughs> at introductions? At magic. Say, but I know you, don't I? In a manner of speaking. You were on the Norse Lloyd as well. Uh... I was, yes. And I can only assume you too were on the receiving end of a rather unwelcome insertion in the ocular region. Uh huh. Couldn't have phrased it more repellently myself. No use sugarcoating it, is there? The insertee we speak of, this <laughs> parasite. Are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it will turn us into mind flayers? Yeah. Process known as ceramorphosis, and let me assure you. It is to be avoided. <laughs> you don't happen to be a cleric by any chance, do you? A doctor? Surgeon? Uncannily adroit with a knitting needle? You seem to know enough about our condition to realize it's beyond most clerics' skills. Most, no doubt. But I find myself hoping to be in the presence of the few. You don't happen to be one of them. Uh, look. All I can do is, uh... Eldritch Blast people. My patron offers me many gifts, but Tadpole Extraction is not one of them. I can't cure our parasites. As we've established, few enough can. It's not exactly a common affliction. We're most certainly going to need a healer, and soon, too. How about we lend each other a helping hand once more and look for a healer together? Sounds like a plan. Um, I'm a little bit suspicious. Because everyone else, we've had this mind link thing happen. Hasn't happened with him. Most excellent. A parasite shared is a parasite halved. Or something to that effect. Nah, I don't think it works oh. that way, but... But before you think you're about to embark on a journey with most ill-mannered a man, thank you for pulling me out of that stone. It was an act of foresighted kindness, I assure you. For I have the feeling ample opportunities will present themselves for me to return the favor. Alright, uh, I'm gonna tell Shadowheart to watch him. 
I don't entirely trust him because uh, he seems to uh, claim that he was also on the Nautiloid ship. Um, but uh, we didn't have that mind link connection. Which is a little weird. He's very jovial. Perhaps too jovial. Well, we'll level him up in any case. I'm assuming he's a wizard. So, yeah, indeed. Wizard level 2. Chosen subclass evocation. I think we can uh, adjust that. So, let's look here. So, alright. Uh, those who specialize in this school are known as evokers. Learning evocation spells from scrolls. Okay, so, what? All this does is reduce the cost of learning spells. Creates pockets of safety within your evocation spells. Allies automatically succeed their saving throws against these spells. Okay, no, there is something uh, else here. So what does, like, necromancy here do? Once per turn, if you kill a creature with spell, you regain hit points equal to twice the spell slot level used. Thrice... Alright, so there is, like, a, uh, a thing. Abjuration. Uh, the residual magic of your spells forms a ward around you that protects you from harm. That's kind of cool. What is conjuration? Which would allow us to uh, basically do... Create water as a as an action. It's not even casting. You can just minor conjuration, create water. All right, could be useful. Could be nice to put out fires, for example. Uh, or enchantment here. This would allow us to use hypnotic gaze. Uh, charm an incapacitated creature. It cannot attack you. It cannot act. It's a melee ranged thing. They get a wisdom save against it. That could be kind of cool. What about divination? Portent. Your dreams grant you glimpses that let you influence the future. After a long rest, gain two random portent dice. During the day, you can use your reaction to change the die of any attack roll or saving throw rolled near you to one of your portent dice. Okay. Uh, interesting. What about illusion? You can cast minor illusion as a bonus action. All right. Cantrip. And then transmutation. You can brew two alchemical solutions instead of one when combining extracts if you succeed a DC 15 medicine test. Um, can we see what your skills are? Do you have medicine unlocked? I don't know. Um, I kind of like the idea of having him go into conjuration, so I think we're going to do conjuration. And so, on that note, we should get a couple of con. We should get at least one conjuration spell. So I think we're gonna get ice knife and find familiar. Magic missile is always a good one. It's an auto hit. Shoots three magic darts, each one dealing two to five force damage. Uh, they always hit their target. Like that's pretty good. But ice knife three to twenty two damage. Uh, throws a shard of ice that deals one to ten piercing damage. It explodes and deals two to twelve cold damage to anyone nearby. It leaves an icy surface. I like the idea, plus it's Conjuration. Although, we can learn Conjurations for cheaper. So, maybe it would be logical to get non-Conjuration, or at least one non-Conjuration spell. So maybe I will get Magic Missile. Then we can just get Find Familiar, because Find Familiar is great. It's a free extra little, uh, little pal. So we can uh, choose some new prepared spells. I'm just going to drop all these. I'm going to keep Grease, for sure. Grease is, Grease is awesome. Uh, we'll take Magic Missile, we'll take Find Familiar, do a Fog Cloud, it's a Conjuration. This cloud blinds and heavily obscures creatures within it. Uh, we can also get the Witch Bolt, nah, we don't need Witch Bolt. Thunder Wave, Thunder Wave is really close range, pushes away objects and creatures. Sleep, Sleep might be really good for getting past enemies. Let's take Sleep, and let's take Mage Armor. Increase its armor class to 13 plus its dex modifier. Target can't be wearing armor, so this will be useful on himself. Uh, would not be useful on any of the other characters because we're all wearing armor. So maybe not. Fog Cloud? Let's take Fog Cloud. It's a conjuration spell anyways, so... Should be good. Keep it uh, a little bit, uh, you know, lore friendly. All right. what now? So, we have ourselves a full party. Now, checking out uh, Gale here. What do you have? Is there anything we can give you? Let's actually give him a crossbow. We got we got an extra one, so 
I'll give him a crossbow just so that he's got a uh, basic ranged attack. And aside from that, I don't think there's anything else that we need to give him. Got some spiked bulbs here. I think I'm going to give them to Asterion so that he has a uh, an explosive. You know, he's got a grenade, basically. Aside from that, everything else I think I'm going to keep. Got a potion of speed on ourselves here. Sounds good to me. All right, let's uh, let's move on. So we found we found Gale. Might be useful. Just gonna do some uh, exploration. Rogue's morsel. So we can make salts of Rogue's morsel. We'll, we'll look at the alchemy uh, at some point when we actually do like a proper rest. What have we here? Seems to be a uh, a ruin of some kind. Ooh, I hear voices. There's people there. Gimbalbach, Tamon. All right. Should be cautious. We shouldn't uh, immediately assume anyone is friendly. So let's actually head up here first. See what there is to be found. A torn neck trap. Interesting. Broken. Must have been here a while. And a smashed cage. So somebody's been doing some trapping around here. This uh, will give us a better angle onto what's going on there, but I don't see anything. Oh, hello. We've got some tieflings. Oh, hello. It's Lazel. Let's, uh... Zoru was right. Yellow as a toad, and twice as ugly. The thing's dangerous. Leave it for the goblins to kill. And if it escapes, how will you... Oh, a guest. These links. skull pounds in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips don't move, yet you hear her voice. Get rid of them. Okay, so she wants out, and she can apparently do some telepathy. Uh, we should we should get her out. Uh, she helped us before. She might be able to help us further. Uh, we can do deception or persuasion. Uh, this creature is dangerous. Get out of here. Leave it to me. So let's get a uh, bonus from Guidance here. We need to meet DC 20, or DC 10. Should be doable. 19, perfect. So we can get these uh, tieflings out of here. She's right. Let's go. We need to check out that blast. Look, be careful out there. A blast? I could use more specifics. You didn't hear it. Shook our camp good, so we came for a look. Persuasion. I'm in dire need of healing. Where is this camp? I'll give this a try as well. DC 5. Could auto pass that. Well, except on a nat 1. Northwest. Look for Nettie. Whatever your wound, she can mend it. And be careful. There are goblin traps everywhere. Okay. Night Messer. Come. That explains the traps. So it's goblins. Enough gawking. Get me down. Say please. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Both Asterion and Shadowheart approve. Alright, so we're gonna get her. Um, she'll join our party. Listen. You'll hear goblins before you see them. As you say. Okay, good to know, actually. Uh, so she, she'll join our party when we get her down, probably, so... And I think you're limited to four people in the party. Uh, I know we're limited to four people in the party, so I'm gonna have to send somebody away. And I don't so know if you can do that. picked up a wizard who managed to get stuck in his own portal. <laughs> Hardly a promising introduction. Bro, you tried to stab me, alright? Um... Let's actually have him... Oh, what's to tell? I'm a magistrate back in the city. It's all rather tedious. Okay. You sure about that? All right, let's 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 have him stay at camp for a while. Oh, darling, I'm hurt. I thought we had something special. Don't pull that shit on me. Go stay at the camp. Well, you know where to find me. Because, uh, I don't trust him. Enough. Like, I don't trust Gale. Strictly speaking, I don't entirely trust Shadowheart either. We've worked out from her symbols that she's a cleric of Shar, which is definitely not to be trusted. Um, I certainly don't trust her, but at the very least, we know that she is uh, very straightforward. I, I think she's the type, if she's going to kill you, she's going to say, I'm going to kill you now, and then stab you. Giving you a fair chance to get away. So, let's, uh, let's break this. Nice landing. The tadpole hasn't yet scrambled all your senses. Auspicious. 
but the longer we wait, the more it consumes. Yes. My people possess the cure for this infection. I must find a crash. You will join me. All right. See, Careful. this is why. She obviously sees your kindness as weakness. Don't let her take advantage. Hmm. You know, Shadowheart, you're, uh... Even though you're probably, for certain, a cleric of Shar, you're definitely the most trusted party member here. Um, okay. But in this case, she, she, her people have a cure. She's saying we need to accompany her. What's their idea of a cure for her? And how does that relate to a cure for us? Is that like, yeah, we'll cure you because you're one of our own. Uh, as for the rest of you shits, uh, yeah, the cure is a sword to the, uh, a sword blade through the brainstem. I mean, that's technically, that cures you from the mind flare parasite. Let's let's ask about this crash. Things, a hatchery, a training grounds, a shelter. Right. The Yankee protocol is clear. When infected with a gate tadpole, we must report to Augusto for purification. Okay, so we know a little bit of uh, Githyanki terminology. I don't know what a ghost still is. Is that the crash? Not sure. Geich? That means mind flare. All right. Um, all right. We journey together. Let's find this crash. Not gonna push this. Uh, demanding her to be polite because she clearly doesn't give a shit. You have made an ally from Crash Kalir. Okay. Do you know such fortune? Call me Lazel. I'll trust your judgment, but I won't trust her. Not until I've gotten the measure of her. That's good. You have a sharp tongue, elf. Would that your mind proved its equal. Half elf. I suppose the finer details are lost on a creature like you. Come. The Horned Ones mentioned a camp. One there, this Zoru, has seen Githyanki. Hmm. A crash must be near. We will ask this Zoru where he has seen my kin. All right. All right. First, we're going to level her up. Because uh, we want to do that, of course. She's a fighter, so she'll be able to hit things. So let's see. Uh... Yeah, unfortunately, uh, like fighters... I know in 3.5, they used to get, like, extra combat feats. I don't even know if feats are a thing in this game. So you just get action surge. Allows you to use an extra action. I do like in the later D&D editions that, like, the weapons... Or I don't even know if this is a D&D thing or if this is something specifically added just to Baldur's Gate. Uh, if any of you guys are more familiar with D&D, uh, the later editions, than me. Are these weapon actions specific? Like, are they in actual D&D or is this just something in Baldur's Gate to make... Fighters a little bit more interesting to play because that was always a huge problem I had is like as a fighter e Even in 3.5 like all you're doing is like I hit this <laughs> Which uh, wasn't particularly exciting. Uh, hold on. Do you have? Yes, you do. Everburn blade. Now we're talking Sweet deal. So she has the uh, the sword that we got Looks like she survived everything just fine. So that's cool Can you use a scimitar? Plus three, there. Uh, you're not proficient in martial weapons, so that would be a no. That's a shame. Action, not reaction. Cool. Okay. I've got a long road ahead. Let's head over to this uh, group of people here. Oh, look, they have a lookout here. Warren. I don't know if they're hostile. Quilana, level two. Like they look like adventurers, which means we can probably. Like, I don't think they're going to immediately be hostile, but let's check. Hello. What's How you doing? Discussion? You! Not another step, hear me? Boss! Got company He looks like here. a bandit, actually. And he's covered in blood. What's this then? Trying to creep around us and loot the crypt? Not happening. Oh, I hate you already. Or is it the ship you're after? Don't matter either way. It's ours. All of it. By what right? Um. <laughs> we could intimidate him. I do have a bonus. We've, we've got bonuses to all three of our uh, social skills, so we can be diplomatic. 
you know, that ship is full of monsters. I wouldn't go near it. Or we can lie to him. I ship that. I think that ship's an invasion force. Run while you can. Or we can intimidate him. The thing you... <laughs> the only thing you own is your life. Leave before I take that, too. Uh, you've been a... Just, like, straight up was, were a jerk. So, uh, we're gonna go with intimidation here. Let's add guidance from, uh, Shadowheart. Should be able to do this just fine. Okay, I think we got it. Yeah, we got it. Good stuff. That was close. Well, uh, in that case, come on, you lot. No point in getting killed. Second worm gets the cheese and all. Um, second mouse gets the cheese. No? Nobody's getting any damn cheese. <laughs> now move it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's getting any damn cheeks. Oh man! All right, that was pretty funny. Uh, you you get some redemption, Gimbal Bach, from being in a uh, you know absolute ass hat. <laughs> Nobody's getting any damn cheese. Hold up, what do we have here? We have a cracked stone. Is this a way in? Coil the rope. Wait a minute. How much interactivity? Oh, hello. Perfect. Okay, so that's apparently... Can we jump? Can we jump in there? Target too far. I don't know. Let's not jump in there immediately. What does this plaque say? Time and the elements have left the plaque unreadable. Cool. Good to know. Um, Twisting vines? All right. Interesting. What have we here? Nice, nice outlook here. Survival successful. Hello. What's this? A dirt mound. No? Use digging with my bare hands. no? I need a shovel. To need a shovel. Okay, so we need a shovel. Uh, we don't have a shovel, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mark this on my map. We will call it dirt. That way, when we get a shovel, we can come back here and uh, dig it up. Let's have a quick look around this area. There's a uh, way down to the coast here. From the looks of it. I only want to look... Oh, hello. More dirt. What the hell? Okay. Um, come on. Let me click. Now, yeah. Yep. Yeah, dirt. So, we're just going to create some map markers to uh, ensure that we can uh, have a quick look. So, we've scared off those guys. Let's, let's actually head down to the coast here. See if there's anything to be found. Oh, hello. Some dagger root. Wish I had a bag of holding. And a hatch. Good. Lock pick it. Lock pick. Wonder what's past this. DC twenty. Ooh, I don't know if I want to waste a uh, a lock pick on that right now. I'm gonna. Okay, it's on the map already, so we can we can come back a bit later, maybe? Because that seems like that might be something that we waste a lot of our uh, lockpicks on. And, you know, it, it's quite possible because there's like a subterranean part to this uh, that like... I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a, a an alternate exit or something. From uh, whatever this is. This is also, I think, because uh, we, yeah, we were just looking out here. So this is the waypoint that we walked past earlier. So this must be the door that was locked. So I reckon we can, you know, we can use that door to get in. Or we can straight up drop in. Hiding here. Ooh, we got ourselves a nice pack. Uh, let's give her a knife, uh, give her a torch, and we'll take all these for ourselves. So that's two more lockpicks. That's good. We've got some more camp supplies, some uh, garlic and some carrots. Uh, was there anything up here? There's a, uh, a wooden crate. I don't think I actually looked at that. I don't know if I came up here. I don't think so. Let's, let's have a look. Oh, no, I must have. Okay, uh, doesn't look like there's anything up there for us to do, so we could drop down. We could, you know what, I want to see if this is possible. We could try and go through the main door, but let's, yeah, look, I, I'm pretty sure you can straight up drop into here. So let's, whoop. Path is interrupted. Okay. Camera is not helping here.
Come on. Okay, what about just falling in? Twisting vines. Yeah, that's that there. Alright. Uh, okay. I, I don't know uh, what I'm supposed to do here. Can I just jump? Yeah, alright. Alright. Okay. Now. So, this is apparently into a different loaded area. Alright, everybody came in. Oh, shit. Uh, we got, we got company, like, immediately. Alright, uh, cool. Um, great. Well, I think, uh, I think we need to partake in some violence here. So, we got one, two, three, five enemies. All here. Slightly, uh, concerning, to be sure. Um, okay. Great. Now, one thing I do notice is there's an oil barrel here. So I could blast the oil barrel with a Eldritch Blast, but I don't think we can uh, actually hit the oil barrel from here. What if I move this way? Can I hit it from there? 100%. Yeah, we could hit it. Let's do that. Is this going to actually blow it up? No, it just scattered oil everywhere. So now we need somebody that can do fire damage. And then I think we, we can dish out quite a bit of pain. So let's hope that this guy doesn't... Uh, okay, he's using a... Uh, Ow. That was a flaming arrow. No, it wasn't, actually. Um, perfect. Shadowheart has Firebolt. Can we just burn the oil? Path interrupted. No, I just want to shoot here. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, yeah, that worked out. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. I like this. Uh, so they've added a whole lot of, like... You know, fun things you can do with the environment in this game. Very Divinity Original Sin 2. Um, I, I love the environmental uh, fuckery that you can do in that game. <laughs> Alright, so next up is going to be... Uh, this is another Archer. Orga. Hamstring shot. Okay, so Shadowheart ain't moving. That's fine. Shadowheart is going to be blocking the... Uh, <laughs> one of the entrances here. Uh, so we're going to put Lazel right here. And she can shoot somebody. Let's see, we can shoot him. Shoot her, not enough movement. Okay, so it's gonna have to be him. So, just give him a good old arrow to the knee, and then you can pull your sword out again. And, uh, and turn. As for Gale, let's... This is gonna create more oil, which is gonna immediately catch fire, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that didn't do any more damage, unfortunately. But it increased the fire, so there's just more fire everywhere. Good stuff. And we have ourselves a nice choke point, so... <laughs> yeah, so they're just taking damage at the start of their turn. And I think if they move through the fire... Okay, ow, that dealt a lot of damage. That was half of our health gone. Okay, shot a firebolt at Gale. Didn't work, though, so that's fine. Um, we gotta kill him. He's at uh, 14 health. I think we can kill him pretty quickly. So I'm gonna hit him with an Eldritch Blast. Or I'm not gonna hit him with an Eldritch Blast. That's okay, too. Uh, alright. Archer here is gonna shoot his shit. Okay, Shadowheart's getting absolutely wrecked here. Yeah, you do need a healing. Um, I'm gonna use a healing potion. And what I wanna do here is actually drop a blessing. Uh, we'll drop a blessing on for basically our, uh, you know, the ladies of the group. So, we're all blessed. Get extra attack rolls here. Because I don't want her to move. I need her to uh, maintain the uh, blockade here. Okay, shooting at Gale. That's fine. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, fuck. There's more of them. All right. Uh, come on, Lazel. You can do it. Chug a healing potion. Nice damage. Nine damage. Okay, I could use my action surge to kill him. To prevent him from going again. Or I can kill him with Gale. But I'd rather have Gale kill somebody else. So we're going to use our action surge here. And uh, make him die. Alright, he's dead. Let's loot him. What do we got? Leather boots? Leather gloves? Two javelins. Oh, there's javelins in this game? Throwing weapons? Hell yeah. Oh, I really want a character to use uh, javelins. Javelins are awesome. Alright. Well, Gale. What can we do? So, as it turns out, Grease doesn't actually cause the fire damage to tick again. So there's no point in doing that. So what I'd rather do is unleash a nice smattering of magic missiles just to ensure that everyone takes more fire damage. So that should cause those two, hopefully, to die at the start of their next turn. From fire damage. Nope. Okay, you lived. But you'll die next turn then. Gale took three damage. That's fine. 
We're gonna come out here with our uh, Eldritch Blast so we can kill you. Is there anybody else I can target with the Eldritch Blast here? What about you? Yeah, we can hit you. Great. Damn it. I'm not hitting anything. Even with Blessing. Come on. And you have good decks, too. All right. Ow. Okay, so they got AoEs, too. Everything's on fire. Um, Who's up now? Shadowheart? Well, if we're gonna... Uh, 1 to 10 damage... Yeah, I mean, we can we can lob around some fire. That could kill you. You're going to die next turn anyway, so we'll we'll hurl a uh, fire bolt at you. Nice. Good damage. He's dead, too. Perfect. They're both dead. Oh, you're still alive. I didn't even see you there. And the fire's gone. Shit. So they're going to live. All right, that screws up my plans. And there's two more coming. Oh, my God. All right. Lazel just took more damage. We're in a little bit of danger. So we need to, we need to, uh, we need to get out and uh, deal with them. So she can engage here. Or you break. Nice. One hit kill. Good good going. Uh, yeah, take all that. And chug a healing potion, because I don't need anyone dying. As for him, you're gonna just like kill that, kill that, because it's one they're all at one health, so these are all three going to die. Triple kill! Nicely done. Alright, good job, Gale. Man, magic missile is awesome. <laughs> okay, so alright, we're no longer on fire. We're gonna, gonna come out as far as we can here. Uh, we've got a bit of health. I'm gonna chuck a potion. I know I'm uh, using our potions here. Uh, okay, you're... I can't get better angle, unfortunate. Nothing else I can really do here either, so I guess you're just gonna hide? This calls for careful footwork. All right, enter. So you coming in here? Shouldn't you be running away by now? Like all of your buddies just died. Apparently he's quite fearless. Alright, um, you're coming out here. Hit him with a firebolt. Good damage. Seven damage. I like it. And then, uh, Lazel, maybe we'll kill him? Yeah, one hit. Damn. That sword is good. Awesome. Alright, we got ourselves a bandit's key. Short sword. Let's go into Lazel. Uh, we'll give her a, uh, torch. And let's, let's loot everyone. Cool. All leather armor. You have a quarter staff. We'll give that to him. A robe here. A burning hands. And a journey through the jungle. The adventurers of one Baron von Baron and his goblin guide jaw as they brave the thick jungles of Chult. The sun had just fallen below the horizon when I first heard its call. A thousand reed pipes at once, whistling a single beautiful, terrible song. Uluthalong, said jaw. It's coming. Jaw dropped her pack and scurried up the nearest bitter. With a bit more effort, I climbed a tree of my own, and the two of us surveyed the grassy ground beneath. Awoo! There it was again, above and beneath, and all around, so close my skull vibrated from the sound. The ferns and foliage under me rippled and swayed. Jaw held a finger to her lips to demand my silence, and in one motion, it snatched her. A vine, a tentacle, it hardly mattered. The hunter had found its prey. Jaw's scream swelled and then faded as Ulu Thalong dragged her away. I leapt down to give chase, but the creature left no mark behind. The grass was untrampled, the shrubs unbroken. I had only the memory of that harrowing call to guide me. Alright, cool stuff. Like the little lore. Uh, we'll say the Forgotten Realms has, has pretty cool lore. Um, it's, uh, it's got a lot of issues that I think a lot of uh, fantasy settings that are made by a bunch of people end up having where it's a bit disjointed there's a lot of just stuff that's like part of the forgotten realms that doesn't really like fit in with the rest of the forgotten realms but overall it's a it's a pretty good setting um i it's definitely the setting i like the most in the D, &D verse um I, I think it's the most fleshed out one as well i, I don't know like maybe maybe everon has a uh, Quite well fleshed out as well. So let's uh, let's explore this place. Uh, we have taken some damage, but uh, we should be okay. Let's let's have a quick look. Uh, we're not going to read every single book. So what is this one? The unclaimed. In life, her service had been impeccable. Daily did she devote herself to the Lady of Loss. Ooh, this is actually um, potentially important because that Lady of Loss. I think that's Shar, right? Did she free herself from the tyranny of memory? All, in time, was lost to her. Her relations, her preferences, even her own name. Upon the altar of her devotion pl 
placed she the ultimate offering, her emptied mind. And when she died, when she awoke in death and found herself standing in the pale and faded city of judgment, she waited for the Lady of Lost to retrieve her. A million souls and more passed in colorless gusts, but no hand materialized in her hand, no voice whispered instructions in her ear, no guidance proffered itself from the bleached and barren sky. Time, immaterial time, passed around her like air, coming and going, and still the goddess did not come for her devotee. Kelimvor pitied her, as much as the Lord of the Dead is able, but could not intervene. This cleric of the Lady of Loss, unclaimed despite her worthiness, might yet have one more lesson to learn. That not of forgetting, but being forgotten. I'm pretty sure this is about a Shar cultist who gave her memories to Shar in a for some reason and was then forgotten about. So really just had nothing by the time she died. So Kelimvor here, uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Forgotten Realms lore, like I'm by no means an expert. And once again, as I mentioned in the previous episode, uh, my knowledge of the Forgotten Realms ends at 3.5. So I don't know what the hell has happened since then. I know a lot of things have happened, <laughs> but uh, uh, Kelimvor is the judge of the dead. He's basically the god of the dead right now. Uh, and he is quite neutral. He's, uh, he's not like an evil god or anything. Very severe, very stern. Um, and he's got the City of Judgment, basically, where all of the dead go to, and basically if you worship a god, you uh, will eventually, ideally, get picked up by your god, uh, except for those that are forgotten, and they end up as shades in and around the City of the Dead. However, if you do not worship a god, and this is one of the very messed up things about the setting, when you die and are brought to the City of Judgment, you are jammed into this living, well, dead, technically, but sort of alive, wall of lost souls, the godless. Uh, and it is a horrible experience that goes on forever. So not worshipping a god, ba basically, like, it's it's bad. Don't do it. And that's that's pretty messed up. Like, this is this is the setting that, uh, yeah, the unclaimed. Always room for more. Cool book, actually. Uh, what else is here? Is there anything else to uh, interact with? There's some, like, bookshelves. Take books. I'm not going to poke around all the bookshelves. Uh, although, there, maybe there's, like, scrolls. We'll look at a few of them. I hope. See if there's something. Oh, uh, yeah, look at this. More books. Another copy of The Unclaimed. The Mortal View. Eyewitness accounts of the Ball Spawn Crisis. Uh, well, this is referencing Baldur's Gate uh, 1 and 2. Um, the Unclaimed again. Wow, lots of copies of The Unclaimed. Seems to be a uh, thing here. We are, from the looks of it, in an old temple of some kind. Oh, man. Okay, it doesn't look like there's scrolls here, so let's just continue on. What do you got? Chapel records. Let's give this a quick read. Fine dust coats the pages of the weathered book. Beneath the bone white powder, hundreds of short obituaries are recorded in tiny scripts. So this is clearly devoted to a temple of some god of the dead. Maybe Kelimvor? Grobian Tipple, Illmater, Drowning. So, the name here, Grobian Tipple, the god he served, which would be Ilmater. I don't remember who Ilmater is. Um, died from drowning. And Yvain Arkinson served Ogma, which is, I think, the god of knowledge. Died from internal rot. That sucks. Deverin Stout served Selun. Selun is the moon goddess and goddess of solace, maybe. Um, it's like the, she's the opposite of Shar. Um, and Shar and Selun do not like each other. And our sisters, the goddess of moon and the goddess of night. Uh, but anyways, Deverin Stout died of fever. Um, cool. What does it say here? You do not recognize the language on the plaque. Well, that sucks. Well, let's loot this rustic chest and steal these bowls and plates. Cool stuff. Looter's trunk. Oh, hello. There's a lever there. Gold and some candles. Not much in the looter's trunk. Uh, obviously, if there's a lever, we want to pull it. Who knows what that might mean. Let's, let's turn some braziers and candles on. Light the place up a little. Uh, anything else? Not really. Um... Cool. Nothing else by the looks of it in here. I do wonder... Oh, these tools. Would you look at that? And a torch. Also good. Uh, what do we got out here? We have another room. We've got two more rooms right here. Let's check out these rooms first. We're going to do the exploration of this place uh, this episode. I don't know how long it'll take, but that's fine. Like, my episodes, I try and keep them around an hour, but I also don't care if they go longer. Okay, hold on. Where are we going now? 
dank crypt. No, we're gonna go back. We're gonna explore the rest of this before we go into the dank crypt. Uh, also, I think I'm gonna do a uh, short rest. That's gonna heal some uh, hit points here. So. Yeah, to... Hmm. Doesn't tell me much. All right. Um, let's just book of fi book of final breath. There's all this like death themed stuff going on here. Um, it's got to be a temple of the dead. Not sure. Um, like Kelimbor maybe. Although the the statue doesn't. Now Kelimbor is hooded actually, so maybe it is a statue of Kelimbor. It would make sense. Like the whole taking notes of uh, who died and like what killed them and what god that that sounds like Kelimbor. At the same time, so there is actually another god. Um man, I can't remember his name, but he's like the scribe of the dead. And he works for Kelimbor. I think he was like a much more powerful god before, but he like stepped down from his position. Uh which caused some serious problems, if I recall, uh, or or he got like deposed and like after being deposed, he decided to become more, like, humble. I can't remember exactly what his uh, deal was. I can't remember. Was his name, like, Nurgal or something? Nurgal? Like the Mesopotamian? I, I think it was something like that. Um, like the Mesopotamian god of the dead. Uh, I don't know. But he was, like, the scribe of the dead. And one of his jobs was to, like, record everyone that died. So maybe maybe this is his temple? Who are those prayers for? Normally, the patron god is obvious. Not here. Yeah, right? Like, it's either Kelimbor or this guy. I'm almost certain. All right. We've, we've looted this area. Then there's just the matter of this place? Have we? No, we have not checked this area. So there's a shabby wardrobe and a wooden crate here. Oh, and a rustic chest. Hold on. Does. Rusty chest with some ink pots. Yeah, you know, it's all stuff we can sell. So we should. Oh, and... We didn't loot you, apparently? No, we definitely did. Oh, this is where we started. This is where we dropped in. Hey. Oh. Road dust, gray clothes, and destitute clothes. All right. You guys, yeah, you're all, uh, you're all dead. Okay, so now we need to, we've checked out that room already, so we need to check the dank crypt, because we've, we've gone through everywhere else. We went through here, yeah, we went through there. Perfect. So we're gonna head into the uh, the dank crypt and take a quick look around. What have we here? An opulent chest. That's gotta have something good. Two scrolls of protection from evil and good. I'm gonna give these to Shadowheart because they're divine scrolls. Speaking of scrolls, we had one from Gale here. So this is something that wizards can do. At least I hope. Yeah, it is cool. So you can still do that. I was not sure if that was still something wizards could do, which is basically you can just learn the spell on the scroll permanently. But you still have to like slot it in so you don't get immediate access to it. Uh, as opposed to if you keep it as a scroll, you can do it outside of your spell slots, which is handy. But we don't know this spell, and I would like him to learn as many spells as possible, because I'm probably going to end up using him a fair bit. We're going to learn. It's going to cost us 50 gold. We have now learned Burning Hands, so we can, uh, you know, if we switch up what spells he has, we can uh, use that, which will be cool. Another torch. Take it. More gilded chests, and on death and resurrection. We're going to have a quick look at that. That sounds like it could be interesting. What's it? Oop, not what I needed. Uh, oh, I guess we're having Gale read this. An excerpt from the ongoing meta text Rebound by Josefa Elgin, a scholar excommunicated from the Church of Denier for her heretical efforts to reconstruct the meta text. Her god's annal of lost and hidden knowledge. I don't know who Denier is. Of what value is a life? Far too esoteric a topic to warrant any serious critical consideration between these pages. Surely, or so it would seem at first glance. But once we push aside the mysticism and dewy-eyed sentiment so often clouding our assessment, it is clear that across the spinning planes, each and every life does indeed have a quantifiable value. It is simply that not all are equally valuable. Well, that sucks. Consider... We already know that the destruction of our material form is not the end. If anything, our souls are more free after death, transcending planar barriers in search of resting places that befits our deeds, beliefs, and stations in life. But even this assessment is subject to market forces. Lord Kelimvor, weighing our souls against how thoroughly we have given them over to other gods, empowering them in turn. So yeah, it's basically like the gods have this fucking uh, 
no Ponzi scheme going on. Uh, there is, of course, an alternate route. Not the end of the path, but the chance to retread it. Clerics across the realms wield the power to return life to any soul deemed worthy or willing enough. It is strange, then, that these so frequently intersect with those deemed wealthy enough. For the components for such a spell are beyond the means of most mortals. I have interviewed those who have made them such a return, and in truth have found them to be of the most dull and unimaginable sort that I cannot possibly imagine what it is they are so eager to return to. If a true assessment of the journey is to be made, then there is simply no replacement for embarking upon it oneself. Perhaps one day this great volume of learning will make me worthy enough to walk that path again and wealthy enough to return. So yeah, that's kind of a janky thing is resurrection. I, I don't like it as a mechanic in any game unless it is directly tied in with the lore. Time to and it is tied in with the lore of D&D, &D, but it's not tied in super well because it's like there's so many characters that like, you know, they've died. So why didn't they come back? Like these are very like influential big time characters that die throughout the, you know, various stories and everything that you read. And it's like, why? Why isn't Resurrection ever used in the books? And, and it is from time to time, but it's like, it's there, it's present, it's a tool. Why isn't it being used as often as it would be used? Like, it's not a hard spell to cast, like, you don't need to be super high level to cast it. And in games, you can buy scrolls of it. Like, we literally have scrolls of Resurrection, or Revivify. Um, I don't know if that's the same ability, but it's just kind of, it feels out of place. The resurrection mechanic. Uh, my two cents. But let's uh, let's let's check out these heavy oak doors and see what we got here. A tomb. Okay. Watched a trap. A trap. A vent. Okay. Hold on. So, um, I think I want to have everyone stay out and just move in with one character. If there's there's traps. This is a way that you can kind of do that. And I think it's. Uh, we'll do toggle group mode, so we're just gonna have her moving off, so you can basically toggle group mode, and then one character can move off on their own. So we've got all kinds of stuff here. Let's check the vases for potential loot. We've got some chests back here from the looks of it. Yeah, indeed. Some sarcophaguses. Ooh. Ring mail. Give that to Lazel. Uh, Termaline ring. Soul coin. Strange, incomprehensible whispers emanate from this coin, pervading your mind with rage and despair. Interesting. A strange coin. I wonder what it's worth. Yeah. A glaive. And, and a bone. Hold on. We can use a glaive because we're a human. Why are the stats so terrible? Because this is a finesse weapon, right? Yeah. And the glaive is not. Pity. Glaives are cool. We can give the glaive to Lazelle. Maybe Lazelle can use a glaive. I mean, she can. I, I know for a fact that she can. But she's using the Everburn sword. We're not going to give that up. Um, I shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. <laughs> yeah. Um, bottle, cool. Should mind my step. So, you go. more That's vent traps. Now, if I recall, because I, I remember this a little bit from the uh, early access, I did not come here specifically because I wanted to see what changed for the actual uh, playthrough. So I didn't come here when I did my test. But, um... If I recall from the early access, this is the place that's trapped, and all these vents on the floor are going to, like, throw oil everywhere, and then there's, like, burning arrows that come out and ignite everything to a massive cluster fuck of explosions, um, which, uh, sounds unpleasant. But if I recall, there's a way around this. We'll, we'll loot these bones first. And so what you can do here is go into turn-based mode, right? And then we can loot the sarcophagus... Quickly grab that. So we just uh, activated the trap. We can get the Watcher's Guide, which is a spear. Time has dampened this spear's sheen, but the center glows a faint blue. The magic it exudes feels old, terrible, and divine. The spear was given to its previous owner for unerring loyalty, even after death. And we have ourselves an engraved key. Black ink stains blot the handle of this key, found in the sarcophagus within a long-forgotten chapel. So we're, of course, going to take those. And then what we're going to do, because the traps have been triggered... We're gonna dash and get the hell out of here. See? Oh no. I fell over. This is bad. Oh no. Is there a way that I can... Can I mage hand to get you up? 
can, can the mage hand do that? I don't know. Uh, I, I'm hoping... Okay, we gotta we gotta end our turn here. Yeah, nothing nothing you can do. We could go and pick her up. Oh, uh, this is this is not ideal. Um, <laughs> this could be very bad. Uh, I could drop a resistance on her, but I need to get to her, and this is gonna like explode in one turn. So we gotta rely on the mage hand. One with the weave. Oh boy. Um. Ouch. Okay. Uh, so this is not doing anything? Okay, she's gotten up. Alright. Yeah, so th that's no longer necessary now. So we unfortunately cast this without it being of much use. Uh, I'm just gonna end its turn. Is this thing gonna trigger again? I don't know what the hell's going on with the uh, the turn order here. Because this, this is confusing. This does not seem like it's the uh, actual turn Everything. order that we're seeing. Okay. So you can jump. So why don't you do that? Just jump over all this to not take any more damage. Then you can dash. And we can get out of here. Alright. So we did this without taking too much damage. Cool. Now we can exit turn base mode. So this just, like, happens here and causes... Like, if you're there with your whole party, you're dead. Excuse me? Hogwarts group mode. Oh, I'm still on fire, aren't I? Well, now I'm not on fire anymore. All right, so uh, that's how we got out of that. Of uh, we have a gilded chest here. Oh, it's empty. Oh yeah, and death and resurrection. That was the book we we just found. Um, God damn it! I would like to actually pick it up. Okay, cool. So we can sell books for a bit of money. So we're gonna head into uh, into here. Heavy oak enough. doors. And lock pick this, or we have the key, the engraved key. Nice. So that opens that itself. Cool stuff. Um, so, there's some... Scribes, but no sign of a struggle. Dead scribes? Which were armed, indeed. Okay, scroll and of burning hands, so let's go into him. About their words that they commanded protection. Yeah, that is kind of interesting. We can loot them. And steal the stuff from these chests. More scrolls of protection from good and evil. Alright, so we got a lot of that. And we have an underground passage. We'll go there later. What's inside? Quarter staff. Is that the gale? Um, bases. Let's actually turn on some lights. So we can actually see some stuff. Um, you know, we'll head down here. Check out what we got. Jurgle, scribe of the dead. There we go. I didn't think anyone still worshipped him. Indeed. All right. Cool. Um, so, this is a temple to Jurgle, which is the one that I was talking about. So, not Kelimbor. So, yeah, indeed. The skull face, the the hood. Um, like, Kelimbor, I think, is always depicted with, like, a sword. And uh, he's got scales. Like, the scales of, uh, you know, weighing things. Not, like, lizard scales. Although, technically, lizards could also hold scales that weigh things. Mm. Complicated. One more scribe here. All right, we have ourselves a heavy key. Excellent. Anything else to be found here? Not, not, not too much. Um, can get some uh, more light here. We can't reach that. We could hit it with a firebolt, but not gonna. Then, uh, well, let's press this button. Something over there. What, what, what's over there? Use. All I can do is use it. Click. Uh-oh. Oh, what a shocker. The Zambies have woken up. Okay, well, uh, so we need to keep her safe. Just woke up down here. Ash uh, needs to not die. Let them come. The but we can uh, get some Eldritch Blast here. Okay, you have a lot of health. What's the Entombed Warrior? How much do the Scribes have? Ten. Alright, so the Scribes are the uh, easier targets. I'm actually going to chug a healing potion. Ready. Wish I could be more sparing with them, um, but what can you do? Uh, so, let's see here. So, Shadowheart can turn... Sorry, turn undead. We're going to send Shadowheart ahead. Uh, we can also drop a... Uh, Radiant? Okay, that does not do any more damage. I would have thought Radiant damage maybe does more to undead, but uh, apparently not. 
As for Lazel, Lazel's going to advance and uh, deliver a crossbow shot to this one. It's going to miss, unfortunate. And then Gale, you can come up here. Uh, you don't really have any spells available, aside from Firebolt, so Firebolt it is. Good. All right, so we dealt some damage to that one. Unfortunately, the other scribes, I don't know what they're capable of. Uh, we took their weapons, so that's something. Oh, great. They just silenced us. Uh, I don't know if I can use turn on, uh, turn on Dead when I'm silenced. That would suck. So they, they can cast cantrips at the very least. Ow. It's uh, solid damage. Okay, so now it's silenced as well. So that is, uh, that's uh that's got no IFF on it. Thankfully, we're good here. I want to pick off these scribes. So let's see if we can kill that one. Eight damage. Barely not enough. Um, no, you cannot use turn on dead. Fuck. Man. Uh, what, what if we come out here? What's the radius on turn on dead? Nine meters? Okay, that is going to hit two of them. It's better than nothing. Turned. Perfect. Okay, so these two are now going to be fleeing. So that's two that are currently out of action. So we're going to advance. I really wish I could move a little bit farther with uh, Lazel, but I'm just going to get rid of this one if we can. Missed, unfortunate. Uh, so you can't do anything in there. So we're going to have to pull you out. Now you can. So hit him with a firebolt. Hopefully that'll kill that one. Good. One down. So this one up here is not turned. And... <laughs> Okay, Shadow Heart's been silenced again, so that's two bubbles of silence. Ray of Frost on Lazel, that's fine, Lazel can take it. You're fleeing. You're fleeing. So I would like to... I don't know if attacking it's going to... Uh... Man, does this have a verbal component? Cannot tell. Let's quickly walk into here. It does, okay. We need to not walk into here. This is going to be a test to see if this is going to break its turn. Yes, it does. Okay, that's a problem. But at least it's at six health. You can chase. Get out of there. Um, get out of there and hit him with a uh, firebolt. Nice. Eight damage. Good stuff. And uh, Lazel, you're going to come up to here. Okay, so apparently they had more gold on them. Can we, uh, charge? Not enough movement. You need to be faster, Lazel. Shh. No, don't shoot it. Shoot this one. Okay. Because Shadowheart's going to take out the other one next turn. Uh, so we need to kill this one, like, now. Good damage. Very good, Gale. Very good. Alright, that was, that was pretty clutch. Because I didn't want him, uh, coming at us. Okay, you're going to advance to here. You're fleeing a little. I'm gonna use Ray of Frost. Okay, Shadowheart can pursue. Hopefully Shadowheart can make it there. The Ray of Frost, that missed. Fantastic. And fleeing. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna come up here Don't as well. And hit that one with a uh Eldritch Blast, which should kill it. Very good. To me. Can you make it? Yes you can. I don't think it's going to bleed for you. I don't think it's got too much of that anymore. Maybe a couple hundred years too late to get it to uh, bleed for you. I will ascend. You will ascend. Uh, you're just going to loot, because the other one's all the way out over there, and I think Shadowheart's going to deal with it, so... Grab that one. Anything to shoot from here? No. So it's all the way over there. That's going to be way out of range. So why don't you do a dash? May it please, Mistra. And get into range there. Same thing with you. Just do a dash. Get as far as you can. These boots have seen everything. Got to keep fighting. All right. Oh Shadowheart, advance. Hit him with a uh, firebolt. Good stuff. Got three health. It's probably going to attack Shadowheart, so maybe it'll be in range for the crossbow. Not quite. I wish you could shoot at farther than maximum range. At, like, a penalty. You used to be able to in 3-5. Uh, I don't know if you can in modern D&D. Uh, &D, or if that's just a limitation in Baldur's Gate. But, uh... Alright, cool. Even after death. 
So, we have, uh, defeated the Skellingtons. Yeah. We're gonna take what we can. And we're going to have a look in that chamber that opened up that we got so rudely interrupted. So, let's go in here, see what there is to find. A lot of effort to hide one sarcophagus. And a heavy chest. I'm done. I can't wait to sleep. <laughs> Amulet of Lost Voices. The dead hold no secrets from Jervgal's Scriveners of Doom. Alright. So an amulet that's going to give us Speak with Dead. I'm equipping that. We got Speak with Beasts, now we're going to Speak with the Dead as well. We can speak to basically anything. So that's cool. We got Speak with Dead, Speak with Beasts. Awesome. And there's a sarcophagus. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Dead man walking. A lich? Now, I remember this encounter, so... So he has spoken, and so thou standest before me. Right, as always. What a curious way to awaken. Indeed. Now, I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? Well, according to the book we just read, that would be depending on the deeds of the person in question. Anyway, so he has spoken. What he are you talking about? An arbiter of certain matters. Kelimvor, I'm but guessing. But that is not important now. Wilt thou answer my question? So, you may be asking, like, why would you assume it's Kelimvor? We're in a temple of Jergal. Jergal is a servitor deity to Kelimvor. Basically, yes, he is a god uh, that does his own thing, but he serves... A more powerful god, which in this case is Kelimvor. So it could make very much sense that there would be a Kelimvor associated character inside a temple of Jurgle. Uh, but yes, ask away. So I ask again, what is the worth of a single mortal life? That depends on a person's deeds. I am sure thou believest as such. Very well. I am satisfied. Okay. We have met, and I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. All right, interesting. Oh, that's some gold and another soul coin. You don't mind, do you? No, it doesn't look like it. Don't think he cares. Okay. Um, well, that was interesting. I gotta... I gotta wonder what he meant by we will see each other again soon. So, yeah, it doesn't look like we can walk through there, so we can... No, we can walk into the water, actually. How far can we go? Not far, apparently. This is a... Yeah, so this is what I was expecting earlier. And I may be, like, vaguely remembering this. I, I don't specifically remember it from the uh, early access, but I think that may have led to me making the conclusion about that... that hatch that we found. And let's see if I was right, or if this was indeed correct. I, I think it, I think it is. That this is the, yeah. Alright, cool. So, I must have, like, you know, sometimes you remember something, but you don't really re know that you're remembering something, so you base a, uh, a decision off of something that you've remembered without realizing that, uh, 
I'll be keeping an eye I, I don't know if that makes any sense for you guys. But uh if yeah. I choose to kill you, you will not even see it. Okay. That remember how I said that Lazelle's gonna be the type that, you know, if she's gonna kill us, uh she would tell us that she was gonna kill us? That makes me doubt that now, so I we, we can't trust her either. I think we can trust Gale a little bit. I just don't know, like, what his angle is. And it's weird that that mind connection did not happen with him. Because it happened with everyone else. And Shadowheart, I vaguely trust her. So, we got to learn a lot more about our companions. But we're going to do that in the next episode. In the next episode, we're going to open it up with a rest. So, we're going to go to the camp and uh, discuss things with all of them. See what they think of our progress, what they think of each other, and, uh, you know, anything they might want to say to uh, Ash here. Ash has found herself in the uh, unenviable position of kind of being this uh, motley group of individuals as a leader. For some reason, they all seem to be looking up to her. She doesn't really know why, but, uh, you know, she'll, she'll do what she has to do. And uh, hopefully won't get asked any pertinent questions about where she's come from or, you know, how she got picked up by the Mind Flicks. Because she doesn't really have any uh, proper answers to that right now. Vague memories, that's all. Alright everyone, if you've enjoyed this, drop this video a like. It was uh, good to see uh, all of you in the comments. You know, it didn't get a huge amount of views or anything. I kind of wasn't expecting it to because I'm pretty late to the party. But uh, it's cool that uh, there's uh, some old faces and some new faces present. Uh... You know, hi Barry, hi Sword Dragon's Leech, uh, good to see you guys back. And, uh, to everyone else, uh, you know, welcome. Glad you guys are all here. And, uh, we will, uh, make this into an adventure. Uh, once again, this is a game I am just purely playing for my own amusement, so... I don't care so much about, uh, view numbers or anything, but if you want to drop this video a like, if you want to leave comments, all of that helps the algorithm, which helps my channel, um, which could use a bit of help right now. It's a little bit in the pits, but, uh, you know, so it is. All right, everyone. I'll catch you in the next one. Ash Arrow out.